our new participants and guests. This is uh, Miss Aryuna Chadarbal. She's our uh, very competent and efficient chair of the TWG on disaster related statistics. So I turn over the floor to you, Aryuna. Thank you, Miss Maria, for uh, for the introduction. The Good afternoon, dear working group members and UNS Cup Secretariat. And as you see, uh, I'm here and I'm back. And I'm delighted to welcoming all of you for our 11th meeting. So, um, wow. Uh, so it's been uh, almost a year since uh, this our technical working group was officially set up. So um, I would like to thank all for being valuable members and your efforts for active participation. Also, uh, I would like to appreciate uh, our colleagues from UNS Cup for everything done uh, for us. So uh, let me start the meeting as usual. Uh, uh, I will uh, provide a brief overview of our last meeting which i missed so the first asia pacific regional symposium on disaster related statistics was held on last july and uh, this uh, symposium served as our 10th uh, technical working group meeting so uh, the symposium served as uh, as platform for government officials experts and other stakeholders to be informed on the progress commitments and plans on disaster related statistics more specifically uh, uh, first on, on the state of disaster related statistics in asia and the pacific uh, as well as globally secondly on lessons drawn from good practices including the indonesia uh, one disaster data and uh, on ways to catalyze national initiatives towards a disaster related statistics framework. And of course, Ms. Maria Talento presented on behalf of our technical working group and then as chair on the regional collaboration to support country level initiative on disaster statistics, which included in an overview of technical working group, the five year strategic plan and how countries could optimize the use of technical working group to initiate disaster related statistics in the region. Yeah, we Somebody request. Can, yes, yeah. okay. can you, if someone open the microphone, can you mute, please? Yeah, thank you. So, of course, and today, Miss Maria will present a briefing on regional symposium uh, to us. After Maria's uh, briefing, a colleague, a colleague from UNS Cup will present uh, to us uh, it, uh, uh, the latest tool for producing statistics on disaster risk. And last but not least, uh, we will have the last session on sharing the good practices on the production of disaster related statistics for the year 2021. So this time we have uh, brilliant presenters from Maldives in my country, Mongolia. So I'm really excited to listen to both presentations. So with that, I would like to invite Ms. Maria Talento to present a briefing on the first regional Asia Pacific Symposium on disaster related statistics, as I mentioned, uh, held uh, 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 in last July. Ms. Maria, over to you, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Madam Chair. Today I will be providing a briefing on the regional symposium that was jointly organized by the various agencies and university in Indonesia and the UNCYAP. And this is also in collaboration with the Statistical Society Forum of Indonesia and the TWG on Disaster Related Statistics. Next slide, please. So part of the TOR of the TWG is to complement the regular meetings with uh, the conduct of an expert forum whenever possible. So such meetings and related events like this one 
shall involve a broader network of experts and communities to include professionals from the academe, research institutes, regional and international organizations, and NGOs. So as we can see from the profile of participants, uh, 1,397 attended. So making it a sort of a record-breaking event, where uh, 699 was uh, in the Zoom meeting, and this number doesn't include uh, the presenters and speakers yet. Uh, 728 uh, participated in the YouTube live streaming. So we can see here that the use of simultaneous uh, media platforms made it possible to reach a wider audience from all over the region. So 10 countries participated in the Zoom meeting, where almost 98% uh, came from Indonesia. Country participants uh, came from a very diverse group of institutions and organizations. Next slide, please. On the highlights, uh, the symposium was divided into four segments, namely the first one being the policy, and second is the substantive segment. So where the need for the development of a policy on disaster statistics in Indonesia was discussed moving forward, also showcasing the progress of the one disaster data of Indonesia and uh, the launch of the e-learning course on the DRSF in the Bahasa language. The third segment is the forward momentum, which discuss the initiatives of the global platforms and the state of disaster data statistics in the region. The fourth is the academic segment, uh, which at this point, Madam Chair, with your permission, I would like to call on a very special guest who was, was just here with us today, Professor Sonny Priyash Priyarsono, who's a member of the Faculty of uh, Economics and Management from the Bogor Agricultural University to give us a very, very short summary, just for two minutes, on the academic no, segment. Yep. Yeah. So, Professor Sunny, yep. if you're ready, uh, I'll give you the floor. So, after Professor Sunny's uh, summary, I will continue with the next slide. So, Professor Sunny, uh, you can just uh, provide us with a very, very short summary on the academic segment. So I invite you to uh, turn on your camera and your microphone for uh, your summary. We still cannot hear you, Prof. Oh, I think he must have problems with his uh, with the app. Okay, so let's just give him another 30 seconds. Okay, I think we cannot hear you. So I think uh, given that uh, slight glitch, maybe I could just... Well, let me let me just uh, step in. Yeah, yeah, Puji. May I, may I call on Puji <laughs> to, <laughs> to say yeah. something about that one? Okay, yeah. Puji, the floor is yours. All right, on behalf of Professor Sonny, let me just step in. The academic segment was uh, uh, attended by um, about 60 people. There are three sessions there. The first one was uh, talking about the, um, wait a bit, um, disaster statistics as a decision support system for disaster reduction. Right? And uh, they discuss about the uh, characterization of the hazard, risk financing uh, in relation to the insurance. And then uh, the second session was on the georeference. This is a new and very exciting prospect to enrich the disaster related statistics that uh, talks about uh, the potential of georeference. Uh, mm -hmm. to estimate the population at risk, risk distribution, uh, zonation, and, and so on, as well as the challenges uh, that are confronted by georeference in trying mm -hmm. to lend itself useful to disaster-related statistics. And the third uh, session 
what's the, the prospective role of universities? Uh, because they are really the pool of the intellectuals to deal with conceptual and the framework and, and uh, operationalization and technical aspect of that. And then uh, finally, uh, the additional session was on the operationalization of disaster related statistic framework. A colleague, as you recall, up to this point, we have developed disaster related statistical framework or DRSF. But the way forward from the perspective of the academic community is how to descend, how to bring that framework into operationalization, right? And within that, there is a, a scope to discuss about the, the big data, the open data, as well as the uh, bottom up participation and top down enabling uh, approaches. So those are the areas that was discussed in the academic segment and they identified uh, uh, new areas forward, the role of universities and also the technical aspect of disaster statistics. I think that's uh, in the gist uh, like that, uh, Maria, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Puji, for that uh, short summary. So we go to the next slide, please. So for the takeaway messages, so given all the presentations, discussions, and deliberations during the symposium, 10 takeaway messages were generated. And this was delivered by Puji Poggiono, our consultant for the TWG, and concurrently he's also the chairperson of the working group on on disaster environment statistics uh, from the Society Forum of Indonesia. So first up, the disasters that continue that countries continue to face, uh, including the current pandemic, greatly hinder the attainment of the SDGs. And this is where disaster statistics, where disaster statistics become more than ever a necessity rather than a recommended task. However, at this point, uh, Given the collective efforts in the region, like the development of the DRSF, the TWG, and the newly established Global Group on Disaster-Related Statistics, provide a good platform of opportunities to develop uh, coherent frameworks and standards that are consistent with uh, the already existing frameworks. Given that, uh, there are still national and local level challenges as uh, we all know, disaster statistics involve many sectors at different levels and many stakeholders. And a lot of these challenges are very common among countries, uh, it being multidisciplinary, where it is governed by different legislations and policies. And with this, uh, we find it common that policy and administrative challenges in countries uh, still remain. Also, as we saw in the symposium, there's a wealth of knowledge that can be tapped from the academe through the various research areas that they conduct on disasters. Next, uh, given the current pandemic, there is really a need for us to make use of alternative capacity development resources and modalities such as the e-learning. And uh, next, while there are new innovations and technologies like uh, the satellite accounting, the advent of big data, there is still a need for us to ensure data security and uh, personal data protection. So, and lastly, given the momentum on disaster-related statistics uh, at the national, region, and global levels, there is really the urgent need for policy, national policy impetus to develop uh, national statistical frameworks and in countries such as Indonesia, for them to translate such a national framework into technical guidelines. Next slide, please. So, uh, this is the end of my presentation, so you can find all the materials on the regional symposium at this link provided at this slide. And I know that this, this, the materials will also be available at the official website of the Statistical Society Forum of Indonesia. So thank you very much for listening and back to you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Maria, for your uh, briefing and then thank you, Puji.
for the additional information and then tech events. And then, unfortunately, Professor Sonny uh, faced the technical uh, issues. And then, but he uh, did messaging on our chat. So if you <clears throat> have time, please have a look at the chat, and then uh, you will have some information. So uh, uh, now I would like to move to the, our next session. And uh, uh, for our next session, we have Mr. Ahlad Musunuri. Uh, he's from UNSCAP, and then he works as a uh, GIS consultant. And then Mr. Musunuri will introduce us the latest tool for producing statistics on disaster risk and then of course after Musenuri's presentation I will open the floor for the discussion questions and then Mr. Musenuri you have 15 minutes and the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, can you see the slides? Uh, yes, yes, we can see the slides. Yeah. Uh, hello everyone, I'm Ahlad. And in this presentation, I'm going to demonstrate uh, some of the new tool uh, what SCAP Statistic Division has been developing to produce disaster related statistical information by using open source Earth Observatory dataset and softwares Q Quantum GIS. The, this is the overall presentation uh, outline of the presentation. What we are going to see the risk uh, disaster risk management cycle and uh, how our tool, uh, what are the methodologies and the flow of the tool will look like and the current research ongoing research of our division to produce a new statistical information system for the countries to monitor and uh, manage the disaster uh, related information system much better way. Uh, this, uh, this tool will be useful in uh, mostly in the long term disaster risk uh, management and uh, peacetime identifying and prioritizing the risk phases the, uh, than uh, response and mitigation phase as highlighted here what the tool look like its overall tool is classified what we'll get is that uh, how many people exposed and the flood inundation areas and the statistical information these all the steps where the tool will produce and uh, visualizes the data set for the countries they can uh, visualize their own statistics and maps here the overall tool is classified into three parts. Firstly, data collection, data cleaning and pre-processing, data post-processing. In this data collection, the we have used Copernicus global land cover data and the flood inundation data and the census population data set. For this study, as a country example, we have taken Laos, but this can be repeated, repl replicated for any country for free of cost. And the plugins, there are various plugins we can uh, tools and plugins are in the something like uh, geoprocessing tools and all which had been shown in the guide. And uh, in visualization session, uh, we can use generate the population statistical information by using journal statistics and some interesting tools in quantum GS to produce the and visualize the maps. One of the key step in this tool is the, to generate their own population data. That's the one of the key important step. The countries can produce their population raster or a population image like world pop. They can uh, generate their own data set by using high resolution uh, like 10 meter to 100, 100 meter resolution what, what the country is using in a better quality way by using the methodology provided from the SCAP, they can replicate it uh, from the, with their own data sets. The, these are the different kind of layers which have been used for uh, generating the uh, population exposure to flood hazard maps and statistical information. Flood inundation layer, population layer and administrative layers. The flood layer, they can uh, either use the from their country national level data. Here we have for a demonstration for an example study, we have used the global data from Gara Global Disaster Risk Platform, but countries can use their own hazard layer. 
these are some of the free data sets which are been available and uh, if they want they can check for more is the overall uh, methodology how the countries uh, how the population uh, raster image can be prepared this is an example of a small uh, small area firstly once we have uh, applied a gaussian filter here the of the built up area the overall image will look like a bit fancy way i have represented the first one it, it scales up to 0 to 1 and the statistical information will be represented the highest value will be assigned the center of the pixel and the lowest value will be assigned in the uh, end, ends of the pixels last pixels and once this uh, data set had been summed together then uh, each pixel will be divided this helps to normalize the data set later on by using the normalized raster layer the population will be multiplied these all especially how the how the countries can generate are been shown in the guide and the population will be distributed the census data sets will be distributed accordingly that's the whole thing major part of the tool the countries can generate later on by overlaying the overlaying traditional overlaying math approach and uh, journal statistics and special uh, other geospatial geoprocessing tools are being used to calculate the percentage of population exposure to flood hazard in each province provincial level the this inform uh, we can generate and it's classified into five intervals the statistical information had been generated for the laos if countries want to generate a risk layer risk map they can use their own attributes like socio economic data sets or other layers they can join with this and visualize the risk map and the coping capacity uh, layers attributes the indicator what they what the country thinks it's better for the better for this study they can join that this is an ongoing research from uh, from our division it's uh, how to use r shiny to generate a risk information system uh, within this risk information system the countries can closely monitor the each pixel at in the ground level from micro to macro scale in a detailed manner how many number of people exposed and the infrastructure agriculture cropland mang ecosystem services even the point of interest data set also we are going to add like schools colleges hospitals uh, which been available in the open street maps they can also be included to to provide a overall package information system that information system can be uh, can be given to any country or the country can generate with zero cost this is an example the if we click on one particular pixel the population in that pixel will pop up and the when click on the one particular pixel on the flood inundation layer the depth of the flood uh, will be pop, popped up this was done by using map view library in r and the total uh, area of land cover and the total population area in the co complete country they can be monitored this in this study i have taken thailand as an example and find the other part is the heat maps this uh, shows the intensity where the flood layer flood agriculture area or urbanization area or uh, crop mang ecosystem services like mangroves area have been mostly affected they can filter separately this is the total land cover area exposed to flooding and these filters is been developed by con by considering the cluster of each individual pixels for example urbanization is affected and the density of urbanization pixels which are been exposed to flooding are been grouped together and visualized in uh, by using heat maps the cluster is visualized where the density is high or the of that locations are been uh, marked as high as red where the density is low as blue similarly the color scheme had been marked 
and this is the overall statistical information they can produce the land cover type and the land cover area affected and the total land cover area of the pro of the region of the of the country and the percentages of affected to exposed to flooding that's all that's the land cover area exposed this statistical information they can generate uh, this is the this is the overall structure overall uh, piece of work how it looks like the the percentage of a flood inundation and the percentage of flood in not inundated layer exposed to flood that the, that represents in the speedometers and the scorecard shows the total population population exposed and the land cover area exposed and the flood total flood inundation area of the country And this is the flood layer as we discussed. It's uh, sorry. And the population effect, uh, population affected locations. And the crop area, how it can be changed from crop area to artificial surface or other layer, other attributes, the indicators they can select. For land cover, if for uh, illustration purpose, we have used uh, the SIA land cover data, but uh, the countries can use their own land cover data sets uh, and the totals. And these are the locations where the population, uh, sorry, where the land cover type is exposed to flooding. This is an overall information system. These are the recent. Uh, achievements of our division where we can uh, countries can generate their population uh, sorry uh, the land cover maps and uh, land cover automations and the hotspot mapping these all the for free of cost they can generate by following these guides uh, we like to acknowledge uh, john will lick and uh, daniel clark uh, to with for their valuable uh, research which helps to generate the uh, generate which helps which is used here later on to understand the concepts and we now we have shown in a practical manner and uh, the insights which have been in the asia pacific report a disaster report are uh, helpful that's it from me thanks any questions uh, thank you, Alan, uh, for presenting very useful tool for this dimension and the illustration of human exposure to flood hazards. So hopefully our member countries or our members can adapt and then use the tool soon. So uh, now it's time to open the floor for the discussion and questions. If you want to join the discussion, uh, please raise your hand or leave message in our chat box. Thank you. May I? I think there's a question. Are you? Somebody's raising their hand. Iria. Yes, uh, Iria Tozen Kali. Yes, thank you very much, Ariana. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my name is Iria Tauson from UNDRR Regional Office for Asia Pacific. Uh, thanks, uh, uh, SCAP colleagues, for this um, interesting presentation. Um, I have a question related to do, what are your plans on, on providing this um, tool um, uh, to countries and rolling out and support on this um, to countries? Um, we, we are aware different countries are developing their own risk information systems and they are using different tools. So uh, what are your plans in terms of providing this as something that the countries um, can customize or it will be a tool that you will host and you will um, in a way um, uh, offer then to host their data and, and, and use it or they can um, uh, use it to integrate in their own platforms to customize or or, or in, you know, also uh, find other applications for that. Thank you. 
Okay, uh, currently I'm planning to give a guide kind of thing by considering the by you as, as I showed some free data sets. They can replace their data like flood inundation and land cover and point of interest like uh, schools, hospitals and other layers. They can uh, they can custom they can change that like a guide format. I'm thinking to develop a web version here where the countries can how to replace with a detailed explanation. And to do that, there is no need of having any prayer or coding knowledge. Also, the instructions will show a clear demonstration how they can prepare their own information system from that guide, like the earlier versions guides. This will be a new one. Thank you. Uh, now I can see Mr. Sushil from Nepal. Uh, please go ahead. OK, thank you, Chair. Uh, this is just my observation. Uh, we have developed the community based questionnaire in our population census. In this uh, community based uh, questionnaire, we have one uh, module uh, like the disaster. If we will get the data from the population census uh, about this uh, disaster, we will get the data about the population affected by the flood and uh, the flood affected area. So if this tool available or we can uh, uh, if, uh, the using this tool, uh, we can uh, we can use uh, sorry, we can use this tool when we will get this data. This is just on my observation and we will be in close contact uh, with uh, UNSCAP and we can do this work. Thank you. We'll yeah. be will be in positive response for that. You can contact. Thank you. So I can see Ms. Shazna raised thank her you, hand. Chair. Yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I just wanted to know I how the data is managed in this tool because uh, I had heard that uh, the actual uh, the data, the areas you want to yeah. oh, also cool. enter the and later the actual affected area is also shown. Yeah. Yeah. There's another sound. Yeah, we have that. How is it fine? Yeah, th there must be multiple devices that are that are turned on now uh, at the same time. So maybe. Maybe Sharsna, if you have uh, multiple devices in the room, maybe you can turn off some of them. No, okay. it's just mine. OK, OK. I, yeah. Now is it fine? Yeah, yeah, it's sure. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to know how how the data component is managed in the tool, because as I had showed that uh, the areas prone to risks are identified initially and later on the actual affected areas are also shown, right? And how how is the data entered into the system when when the real uh, uh, event happens? Is it on real time basis or is it later on? It it is a, a entered. I mean the really affected area or the population affected. The component is is it on real term a connected to the uh, data collection at the event? Is it? Uh, it's not a real time information system, but the countries uh, once because uh, the, it's it's a tool where the countries need to customize. If it's a real time, it will be belongs to one one particular uh, application only. The, if you have a flood inundation layer which, which had been generated from any hydrological modeling or uh, by, by using radar data, the, you can upload it directly. But as I said earlier, also we are providing the guide how to upload or replace or customize the data. You can customize your own layer and uh, rest all will take care by the code. And directly you'll get the information system. That's it. So, so that means if the country uh, had the layer, it could allow the real time as well, right? If you have the data real time, first of all, what is real time is that every hour or every minute how the flood water is varying or uh, rain, rainfall water is varying on 
they can monitor closely. That's it. What that's what real time information system. But what as far as what I understood is from your point, if any event is happened, if your people had been generated a flood flood hazard map, immediately you want to upload into the data sets, right? If that's yes. true, it will be possible in 100% by using our guide. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for the questions. And then the links for the tools is already uh, in the chat box. And then please feel free to visit uh, the links. And is there any questions or comments? If uh, there are none, I would like to move to our next session. Um, so uh, for the next session, we do have a country sharing of good practices, focusing on data collection, compilation, data utilization and sharing. And now I would like to invite Mr. Satio Neuro to moderate this session and uh, Mr. Satio Nura works as a statistician for statistics in Indonesia. So, uh, Mr. Nura, over to you. Thank you. Thank you, Manager. But first of all, can I hear? Can you hear my voice? Yes, yes. we can oh, hear your thank voice. You. Yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I think I um, would like to wish a good afternoon to everyone. Nice to meet you. And uh, first of all, I think I would like to thank you to uh, Miss uh, uh, Maria, who, uh, what is that, um, uh, invited me to be a, a moderator this afternoon. I think uh, my name is Satyo Nugroho. I'm working in a statistical uh, office as a statistician. So I think it is a great honor for me to uh, uh, join to uh, moderate uh, the discussion this morning. Well, uh, I think um, before we begin, I think uh, I would like to remind to all the participants that uh, uh, this uh, the aim of this uh, discussion is uh, 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 what is that um, uh, country sharing uh, of uh, good practices and uh, 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 collecting uh, uh, compiling the disaster uh, related statistic. I think we do agree that uh, uh, the uh, important thing of the uh, disaster uh, uh, related statistic uh, for any program. And um, I think uh, as people said that um, I have to mention also that the statistical data uh, is a very is not everything I mean, but everything without uh, statistical data is nothing. Okay, there will be two uh, speaker. Yeah, uh, one from uh, uh, Maladev. Yeah, Man yes, uh -huh. and second from uh, uh, Mongolia. Um, before I read the uh, uh, what is that uh, the. Uh, background of the speaker, uh, let me uh, show you uh, something about the, uh, uh, what is that, the, um, uh, the fact of these two country. Um, what is that, uh, um, Mal Mal Maladev is a, a coastal area, you know, that um, uh, they have many, uh, what is that, uh, coastal area, which also have many, uh, uh, beautiful beaches and also uh, atoll and also the uh, what is that in English uh, um, lagoon yeah so some people said that uh, this is the suitable uh, places for the new couple uh, to have a honeymoon I think right okay and uh, I'm then sorry I'm sorry Satya but can yep. you please uh, so, because we cannot see you uh, oh, you really? can only see your chest, so maybe you can move farther from the camera okay. so we can see your handsome yeah, yeah. face. I'm sorry, I just hired my uh, son uh, laptop, you know, 
It is problem with yeah, my own yeah. laptop. <laughs> right, Probably sorry. you can move a little farther back. Okay. Can so you see? Can okay see. then. Right. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet, sir. Okay. Wow. Now a okay, little further then. more. Yeah. Okay. Then. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, this is my first time at anyway. Anyway. Okay. Then uh, there will be two uh, speaker this afternoon. Yeah. Right. Okay. Then um, let me read now the uh, speaker. One is from uh, uh, Mal Mal uh, Mal Maldives. Yeah. Uh, let me say, Miss uh, Siad Sasna, right? Sorry for if I pronounce incorrectly. So she's a statistician. Uh, she's uh, working in National Statistical Office, the Maldives. Okay, and uh, the title of uh, her uh, presentation is uh, Maldives Effort Toward Disaster Related Statistics. And for the second is the uh, Miss uh, Oyun Jargal Mangal Suran. Again, sorry if I pronounce incorrectly. So she is a senior statistician for Mongolia. And the title for her uh, presentation is Statistic Development and Initiative on Disaster Related uh, Statistic Mongolian. Okay, then I think uh, every speaker have only uh, 15 minutes. And then after uh, the discussion, we will followed by the uh, question and answer. Okay, without any further ado, I think uh, I should call the first speaker. Uh, that is uh, Ms. Uh, Sasna. Okay then, uh, the time yeah. is yours. Um, sorry for interrupting Mr. Moderator, but I would just like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Aisha Shahuda, the oh. former st uh, Chief Statistician of Maldives. She's okay. with us today, so uh, Shahuda, hello, welcome to the meeting, and uh, it's very nice to see you here uh, giving support to Shazna. So that's all. So over to you, you. Uh, Shazna. Thank you, Maria. Thank you, uh, Mr. Satio, uh, the chair of this session. Uh, may I share the screen, or Maria, will you be sharing? Okay. Yeah. Uh, just to start with, uh, as Mr. Sadio introduced Maldives, yeah, it's a beautiful country. And uh, Maldives, uh, as you may know, is a group of scattered islands in the Indian Ocean. And we, at the uh, current year's population, is projected at 568,362, and we have uh, 26 natu natural cap coral atolls, uh, which comprises of 1,190 coral islands. And from that, 187 uh, islands are inhabited. We have uh, 90,000 square kilometers across the country. And uh, the islands uh, that make up the Maldives are very small actually most of the islands are in and is very low lying most of the islands are and this makes uh, the islands very vulnerable to different types of uh, related disasters and uh, the major disasters in the Maldives uh, are mainly heavy rainfall and flooding coastal erosion surge waves fire incidents water shortage sea level rise tsunami cyclones and such and on the uh, Figure shown here on on the left, you can see it, it shows uh, the all overview of the hazards and disa disasters uh, risks in the Maldives, and this this one is actually from the uh, detailed island risk assessment done in the Maldives, and it as it shows uh, there in the Uda Uda we call the term in Divehi. It's actually the coastal flooding through swells. It's uh, shown as in the diagram uh, to be the to be the very high based on the frequency of occurrence and where uh, tsunami is uh, the highest on severity as such. Generally, the Maldives uh, regularly get affected by high frequent, but in terms of low impact to, uh, through it. Next slide, please. And uh, looking at the enabling environment for the disaster management and disaster data is such 
Uh, firstly, the Constitution of the Maldives uh, 2008 provides the main legal base to support the disaster management and uh, uh, along with that, the Disaster Management Act of the 2015 provides the full legal basis to the disaster management. And along with that, the Armed Forces and the Police Act, the both the Act provides uh, support uh, for the disaster management in the country where the armed forces uh, are assigned to uh, assigned for the disaster relief operations in in the country and where the police act uh, assigns and mandates the police services to protect the people and the properties and uh, uh, right after the tsunami during 2004 the presidential decree was uh, under the under presidential decree the National Disaster Management Center was established. Now it is called the National Disaster Management Authority. And along with that, uh, the Decentralization Act of the Maldives supports uh, the data collection in, uh, through the uh, council level, which is the root level for the data collection. And uh, the councils are assigned, I mean, the uh, Decentralization Act assign the councils to establish a mechanism that provides assistance to in times of the emergencies and during disaster disasters. And along with that, on the data component, the Statistics Act recently ratified, happening to share it with you, that last month it was ratified by the president and it uh, allows us and mandates us, uh, the National, the Maldives Bureau of Statistics to assist in the mandated designated statistics collection and compilation in the country. And one of the areas is the disaster. Right. Next slide, please. And on the data uh, environment, looking at the data environment uh, in the Maldives, the, the Maldives Bureau of Statistics is the core body for data collection and compilation for official statistics. And uh, the national statistical system has evolved in a decentralized manner, uh, meaning that the related statistics uh, will be collected through other agencies as well. And uh, for the disaster component, the National Disaster Management Authority is the leading coordination authority for all the uh, disaster related uh, data. And uh, the Ministry of Environment is the uh, co agency for the environment related data. We are the uh, state uh, state of the environment report publishes every three yearly uh, uh, data on the environment related vulnerabilities and events uh, related to disasters as well. And uh, the Maldives Red Crescent is uh, seen as mostly an auxiliary the government agency for on the on responding to the emergencies and disasters in the country. So the data collection process is assisted by the Maldives Red Crescent uh, as well to the National Disaster Management Authority. And the Maldives Bureau of Statistics, as I've mentioned before, is the lead agency for the data collection. And we, through the different uh, data sources available in the country, we provide as much available uh, data on the disasters as well. And we did include a component on disasters in the most recent household income and expenditure survey also to cater the policy needs on uh, this area. And another agency is uh, the Maldives Meteorological Services, which uh, provides the data on the weather forecasts and emergency information in the country. Next slide, please. And uh, looking at the data management, the National Disaster Management Authority, uh, its vision actually in the current diagram, you can see that they are trying to establish a, a data information management system that helps to analyze the disaster trends and their impacts in, in a systematic manner. And you can see in the main, uh, in the center of the uh, diagram, it shows the NDMA is the information hub for the disaster related data where it comes from the root uh, level from the island councils at the bit, at the bottom and the national and local agencies involved in the z disaster area for the data collection component uh, as i've mentioned in previously the Maldives red crescent is an auxiliary agency to the government 
on the disaster component and uh, through those uh, agencies the it, the data is reported to the main hub and it is connected to the uh, national uh, geographic information system which is based in the land survey authority of the ministry of national uh, planning and housing and infrastructure as well and it's interconnected to the disinventa which is the un tool for the disaster information system and uh, at present is uh, uh, been advised by the NDMA that they have tried to uh, populate the database as such, but until the 2018, they have populated it so far uh, with the limited capacity at the uh, agency. And uh, through, through uh, actually their vision is through this uh, information hub to serve the policy uh, decisions as well. Next slide, please. And uh, showing the roadmap to the disaster-related statistics, actually we do have uh, challenges as such uh, on the standards, coordination, technical data, and the process as such. And on the standards, actually we lack definitions uh, at national level. So uh, we, we need to uh, come up with local definitions to the Maldives uh, context to cater the disaster statistics is such, and we do lack coordination among relevant agencies. We've highlighted uh, the data environment as well uh, with different different agencies, but the data is not as such coordinated at present. So sometimes it's not shared between the agencies. And also another issue is the lack of technical capacity for data management and and it lacks the analytical capacity as well in the Maldives Bureau of Statistics being the core body as well. We do lack this capacity and uh, to cater other agencies to assist and guide, uh, we do lack that capacity as well. And also another issue highlighted was uh, the lack of uh, quality historical data as as uh, NGMA was trying to populate the national information hub for disaster data. They they mentioned that the past data was not in a standard manner and it was difficult to obtain this historical data as well. And there are gaps in the data management process and uh, in the collection, entry, and database organization as well. And uh, for the way forward uh, in tackling these uh, challenges as well, we are trying uh, through the na national statistical system to establish uh, a national uh, policy level uh, disaster related for the uh, working group for the disaster related statistics, which will be coordinated within the national statistical system and through this uh, disaster working group to set relevant standards and methodologies and guidelines on data as well. And uh, we, we can have discussions through the tech, uh, technical working group on disasters and try to uh, uh, assess the gaps in different areas like the uh, requirement for the uh, human resources as well, the technical uh, capacities needed so that we could uh, try and strengthen the technical capacity and the data management as well as on the analytical con con uh, area as well. And uh, at the moment, we are trying to build a, a community-based monitoring system together with the uh, current efforts of the local government authority. They are coming with, e with an e-council portal and they have different, different modules. So as such, we could include a module in the community-based monitoring system on disaster as well. We are trying to come up with this one. And, and lastly, uh, we will try and integrate the related data systems related to the disasters as well, and to conduct specific assessments and surveys as such a, we have done in the recent household income and expenditure survey. Uh, yeah, that's it from our side. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it, Ms. Uh, Sasna. Um, it is a, um, a comprehensive uh, presentation, I think, but due to uh, uh, the limitation of the time, I think uh, I should 
call the uh, second uh, presenter but uh, i forgot to tell you the uh, um, what is that the uh, some fact of, uh, in uh, mongolia i think all i know that uh, this country uh, doesn't have a uh, sea at all but this doesn't mean that the, there is no uh, uh, disaster uh, some disaster like uh, storm desert uh, and also when uh, the uh, winter come uh, there will be a severe about uh, if i'm not wrong minus uh, 50 uh, uh, celsius degrees isn't it? yeah i think uh, mother chair is no more because she is uh, uh, inhabiting there okay then i think for the second uh, speaker i'd like to call um, miss uh, mangal suran okay the floor is yours uh, 15 minutes please thank you Yes, go ahead, Miss Mangal Shuran. Can you hear me? Yes, of course. I'm opening my presentation. Thank okay. you very much for the invitation to present me about the uh, uh, statistics developments and the initiatives on disaster related statistics of Mongolia. Thank you very much. And uh, uh, good afternoon, all. Uh, my name is Ayun uh, It's very, very long and call to the uh, call. It's very difficult to call. And my uh, short name is Oji. <laughs> yeah. And uh, now I would like to introduce the, my presentation um, contents. Uh, it is uh, uh, consists of three parts: enabling environment. It mainly focusing to regulations and legislations to establish disaster related disaster and also data management. It focusing to mechanisms to collect that disaster related disaster related statistics and also the data sharing and data utilization and uses. And also third one is towards establishing the RSF, it uh, mainly focuses to challenges and action taken in the food to implement in the DRSF. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce the data disaster management system. Uh, it consists, uh, in, in our case, it consists of five parts. The government, government, the government is, the, uh, is making a uh, final decision on disaster and uh, it's chaired by the prime minister. And uh, also we have a national, national disaster protection committee. Uh, this committee is ensuring in sector cooperation in disaster prevention and make policy recommendation to the related agencies and all public uh, uh, organizations. And also, Deputy Prime Minister is in charge of emergency situations and chair the state emergency commission directly. And also, we have a state emergency uh, commission uh, this commission for, is providing unified and integrated management and coordination of disaster protection activities to make decisions to organize and monitor them promptly. And also we have a national agency, manage, national emergency management agency. This agency is providing unified management and coordination of disaster protection activities and to make decisions and to organize and monitor them promptly. And, and uh, NEMA um, direct, um, is uh, working under the deputy prime minister. And also, beside of these main activities, uh, NEMA also 
responsible for the collecting and compiling disaster related statistics and creating databases for main indicators of disaster uh, disaster statistics and uh, after that uh, i would like to the legal basis on the disaster management system and uh, we have a disaster protection law this uh, law mainly provides the legislative and regulatory basis and also establishes the system and sets strategies and programs and also we have a policy state policy on disaster protection and uh, this policy is setting methodologies and technologies assessments forecasting and warning means to implementation and human financial and technical resources also we have a national program on the disaster protection this program mainly focuses on to strengthen the system and reduce vulnerability, multi sector coordination into planned activities from uh, reduction, uh, disaster reduction, and prepare this response and recovery. And also, we have a statistical law by the statistical law, national statistical office. Uh, have a um, mandated a disaster related uh, have, have a mandate to disseminate disaster related uh, data And uh, now I would like to give a brief information about uh, data management system. Uh, in uh, for the uh, data completion of disaster related for the for, for the disaster completion of the disaster related statistics, NEMA and the National Statistical Office and National Meteorolo Meteorological Office are the participating to produce the disaster related statistics mainly and NEMA is responsible for all collection of the, uh, the initial registration of the disaster statistics and also the detailed hazard data. They collect detailed hazard data within the 72 days, 72 hours and uh, also after that collection they aggregate uh, data and submit to the national statistical office and uh, beside of that uh, the national meteorological office produces a uh, hazard mapping on the desert uh, hazard mapping on disaster statistics and uh, the national statistical office is responsible for the all all um, disaster related statistics and data dissemination and by the um, monthly bulletin and by the annual uh, yearbook and also uh, national statistical office uh, official website of national statistical office and uh, after that uh, the uh, data completion we are sharing all um, disaster related statistics to the all stakeholders and all uh, the um, public users, uh, public organizations and users. And uh, now I, sh I will introduce the, about the utilization of the uh, disaster related statistics. Uh, uses uh, mainly focusing to enhance uh, disaster databases for, uh, for disaster risk and management and emergency response and also to provide and strengthen the evidence basis for and for research and development also to provide the basis for and linkages with the just special aspects of risk management and emergency response and also to define disaster for an area population and in infrastructure is the basis of risk risk management and enhancing enhanced preparedness and also 
disaster related uh, statistics uh, is used by the to organize the disaster communication and warning and information mobilization and evacuation and also to organize search and risk, rescue operations and eliminate the consequences of disasters and also we use this uh, um, disaster related statistics to improve the collection and analysis and the reporting of the post disaster data and sustainable and resilient recovery and also to compiling evidence for monitoring and reporting both for the national as well as the global uh, if the rr and sdgs Okay, uh, thanks. Um, I am not yet oh, finished. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, One okay. slide, slide I have, and uh, towards establishing the. Okay, the yes, go ahead, please. Thank you. I'm sorry. Uh, what <laughs> challenges? We have, uh, of course, we have uh, challenges to implement. Uh, um, and uh, DRSF and also to collect the uh, disaster related statistics. Uh, we lack a standard standardized definition, classification and calculations and concerning risks and occurrences, post disaster damage and losses and monetary calculations uh, we don't have and uh, lack uh, like in the, on the methodology and also on the coordination and clear division of uh, among the agencies and concerning disaster related data completion and analysis and sharing and utilizations. Uh, on the capacities, we have uh, gaps in the quality of disaster statistics in primary units and uh, need to train staff of NEMA and other organizations. And also, on the resources, we have an insufficient investment in the development and sustaining the different aspects of the disaster related statistics. On the momentum, also, we, need, we have a lack of momentum to enhance the awareness and understanding and usage of disaster statistics. In food, we need to actions to take the following actions of the standardized on the definition, indicators, and the methodology for both risks as well as a loss assessment by sector and linkages among databases of producers and users. And also on the coordination, we need um, to take established policy, including the designation of the managing body to organize the integrated disaster related data and also the uh, leverage regional and global uh, global cooperations to raise awareness organize training workshops and develop the guideline lines for drsf and optimize the resources for mp mpm c proof the demo to develop the RSF and later to use the DRSF to leverage national, regional, and international cooperation mobilization. Also, NEMA and NSO to jointly organize the national road, roadmap towards the development of the RSF. That's all of, from my side. Thank you very much for your attention. Okay. Okay. Um, is the presentation finished already? I'm sorry because of the uh, problem in my computer. Hello. Okay then. Um, well, also I think uh, the time also very limited, and I think we are going running out of the time. I think it's still we have still five minutes. I think yeah. If we have um, fifteen minutes, you have fifteen minutes. Okay yeah. then. Okay then. Um, I think I will give um, for the uh, 
uh, for the opportunity for the uh, participant to ask by uh, using the chatting box, or you can raise your hand. Okay, then. I'm looking forward to hear from you, all the participants. Nobody? So we just heard all the uh, effort by uh, the two countries yeah, in compiling the uh, disaster uh, related data. Well, uh, I think it is a, a great idea uh, to ask uh, what kind of uh, similarity and the difference between uh, uh, these two countries, I think. Okay, um, anybody would like to? Oh, maybe you don't understand what I say, right? <laughs> That's the problem, I think. Mr. Nugrujo, we yep. have a question uh, yep. in the chat box. Oh, if you're having problem to read it, yeah. I can read it. Hang on. Okay. Yes, uh, this problem, I think. Uh, would you please help me, uh, Madam Chair? Uh, uh, sure. So we have a question from uh, uh, Navidia. And then it says that Hi. the population of disabilities is one of many indicators covered in disaster related statistical surveys. However, the, the challenge here in Indonesia is our population census in the 2020 did not include, include this information. Another survey data sources such as the Susanas can only result in indicators such as the percentage of school children with disabilities. Is there any proxy indicator to the population of disabilities? Now, Willia, uh, if you uh, could you clarify uh, whom do you address the question? Thank you. I think she didn't hear you, uh, Aryuna. Uh, oh, I think it's for I both think, countries. Yeah. yeah, for both countries, yeah. Mishasna Oji, would you like to answer the question? If I'm not mistaken, is is she asking about whether we included that component? Is it did not include the information? Yeah, probably or you know we can ask uh our members who are involved, who are with the NSO if they have any if they can answer the question of Navidia or uh, Shazna, uh, would you like to say something about this? Yeah, in the moments in the okay, recent okay. household income and expenditure survey, we did include a question on on uh, disasters, and uh, we, it showed that uh, households suffered from disasters in the past twelve months. Uh, like for the total Maldives, it was like nine percent, and majority has reported floods due to heavy rains to be the main disaster. So uh, in that same survey, we did include the disability component as well. So I guess uh, even if we have, haven't have represented as such a uh, disability to the disaster, uh, we could uh, have uh, 
I mean, obtain data on that basis as well. Mm. And in the upcoming census, we are trying to include the disaster fish, I mean, I mean the disability uh, component as well in the upcoming census in 2022. Okay. So is there anyone uh, who would like to share the experience that have this proxy indicators to the population with disabilities? In, in, I would like to add uh, some more answer. In, in Mongolia, we have a question about uh, uh, affected population of disabilities in Nyema questioner. We asked about that, that. We ask about that. How many disabled person affected in these occurrences and hazards? And uh, and we collect this type of data related to the disabled person. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So I think our two speakers answered uh, the question. So is there any question or comment? Um, or, you know, maybe I can say something also with the question of Novilia. Usually of the different uh, statistical offices, if, uh, if, for example, they're unable to uh, unable to include some aspects, for example, in the disasters in their main censuses, they can always look at the other regular censuses that they uh, that they regularly conduct and make it as a rider questionnaire. So I think uh, what this uh, what the NSOs are doing are rationalizing the censuses and surveys. Meaning that uh, when you conduct a special survey, for example, on a population with disability, it requires uh, separate funding and budget. And, uh, and mostly all of our offices have uh, budget constraints. So I think that's also a very clever way of uh, including some data that we need, for example, for international monitoring like the UNDRR Sendai framework, is to make use of the regular surveys that have regular budget and just make uh, uh, make those things that you would like to ask uh, as a writer questionnaire. So I think that's uh, it for me. And also I would like to add or Yuna that uh, Iria from UNDRR has has uh, written something in the chat with regards to the support of UNDRR for Maldives with regards to uh, strengthening risk and disaster impact data. And uh, there is also a, a post there um, that they, for a uh, posting for a national consultant for climate and disaster related data enhancement, and that's for a consultant. So everybody, uh, you can have a look at the chat and uh, maybe uh, you know some friends who can be, who are, uh, are qualified for, the, for this uh, consultancy. So that's it, uh, Aryuna. Yeah, thank you, Maria. Uh, Mr. Nugroho, are you with us? Oh yeah, I just uh, get yeah. The, I let you. I oh. let you finish your session. Thank you. <laughs> okay then. Yes, uh, we still have uh, about um, uh, maybe um, um, five minutes. I think right. Yeah, up to three twenty-five. So um, anybody uh, would like to ask more question about the two countries?
um, set yo, me again, Maria. So I would just yeah. like to congratulate the two countries for giving us a very, very clear and uh, yep. excellent presentation. So it's more or less uh, uniform so that uh, we're able to compare countries, uh, um, comparing all the different aspects with regards to um, the challenges and the initiatives uh, on disaster-related statistics. And uh, of course, Puji, our consultant, has uh, been uh, of great help to all the for all the presenters in coming up with uh, more or less uniform, a standard template for presentations. Yeah, so there's Puji. Do you have something to say, Puji? You are muted. I'm laughing already, but I'm, I'm still muted. Uh, Madam Chair, Maria, and uh, Patio. Yeah. I think by the 11th meeting now, we're seeing an emerging pattern, all right? that each and every country seems to agree that the RSF is a good thing, that it is important to get there, right? But everybody is presenting problems, and no one is presenting solutions yet. <laughs> okay. But uh, it seems like there is a, there's a pattern. One, there is issue with the lack of standards, right? issue lack of capacity, the issue of lacking of policy, the integrating policy, right? And finally, the issue of the data itself, both historical and the current data. So these are four patterns that appear, Madam Chair. And uh, maybe uh, the committee would like to consider that from now onward, enough talking about the problem, <laughs> maybe now it's time for, for us to to deliberate, to brainstorm on solution, right? And for us to be, you know, taking, helping uh, members to take steps. So those are my impressions, Maria. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you, Puji. Okay, uh, thank you, Puji, uh, uh, for your uh, comment on this uh, uh, session. And again, I think uh, if we, have a look at the time, and now it's uh, about the time, I think, to finish. And um, before we finish, uh, perhaps uh, I just want to say that uh, this, this uh, discussion is uh, very valuable, I think, for uh, all the uh, 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 participants. Yeah. So thank you very much, uh, all the, uh, what is that, uh, speaker for being here. And also thank you very much for all the uh, participants. Uh, for being here, and I think that's all for uh, this session. And I uh, hand over to Madam Chair. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Mr. Nugroho, for your uh, excellent, excellent facilitation of the sessions. And then, of course, I would like to thank our presenters, Ms. Shazna and then Ms. Oji, for the great presentation. And then I really much uh, enjoyed the both presentations. And as Mr. Nugroha stated, Mongolia is a landlocked country in which we don't experience like tropical storms, tsunamis and others. But we do have our own disaster, especially uh, the harsh winter disaster, we call it Sud. So, um, yes, it was very interesting to listen initiatives uh, in on disaster related statistics from completely two different countries uh, like Maldives uh, is situated in Pacific Ocean and Mongolia is situated in Northeast Asia between China and Russia. So hopefully our members also had many takeaways uh, uh, from the presentations and today's sessions and as uh, uh, Mr. Puji Pujana uh, just stated that that now it's time uh, to take the step towards uh, uh, some actions. So let's do it together. Um, so before closing, <laughs> so before closing the meeting, I would like to ask the secretary to speak if you have any housekeeping announcements or any other businesses as we are approaching to the end of the meeting. Thank you.
Uh, yes, uh, Aryuna. So I would like to share some information that, uh, well, uh, as Pooji mentioned earlier, we have already uh, 20, we heard 20, present, 20 presentations from our colleagues from 20 countries, and uh, we've heard everyone. And it's now time to go to the solution part. So I would like to inform everyone that today's meeting will be the last session. As you said earlier in the beginning of the meeting, for sharing of country practices for 2021. So beginning next month up to November, we will start uh, conducting a training workshop on different topics, which all of you have communicated to the TWG as priority areas of concern. So given all the discussions in the TWG. So for September, in our next meeting, uh, the workshop will focus on policy setting. So we will be disseminating all the information on this in due course. And uh, our consultant Puji has uh, already made the training uh, module component on this. And this will be about catalyzing the policy impetus for disaster related statistics. And uh, this will cover like a review of the policies relevant to the DRSF and uh, to determine what are the policy priorities with uh, related to the demand of the RSF. And we would look at the structure and mechanisms of producers and users of the information. And of course, uh, the main objective is to develop the policy impetus to catalyze the development of the DRSF. So we will be inviting uh, resource persons from UNECE, from NDMO Indonesia and Turkey. So uh, a lot of information will be disseminated um, in due time. So I would encourage everyone to please uh, uh, join the series of workshops until November. And come December, we will have like a, a look, we will look back at the year just passed and uh, we will have a short meeting on what were the achievements that we had for the year 2021 and uh, next year it will be a new beginning so probably we will see how we can uh, take this all our work forward so that's it miss uh, madam chair and back to you thank you maria so uh, from september uh, we will have a series of workshops so that's a uh, uh, good news so uh, let's uh, uh, I would like uh, to ask you all to make the time to actively participate or engage uh, all the workshops. And uh, um, now we are close uh, to the end of today's meeting and I would like to thank all of you again for uh, joining us today. And then of course, thank you all. Thank you uh, all our presenters and participants. And if there are none, before I declare this meeting closed, I would like to let you know that the next meeting or the workshop is scheduled uh, as always on Wednesday, 29th of September 2021. So as Maria uh, said, uh, we will receive uh, more information from uh, our secretariat in due course. So again, I would like to thank you all for your time for joining us today. And then with this, I would like to close the technical working group meeting. Thank you all. Stay safe and then see you next month. Yes, thank you all. Thank you so much, Professor Sonny, for, for uh, joining us in the meeting. Thank you, Fuji. Thank you, are you now for a job yeah. well done as always? Thank you, everyone. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Bye -bye. Bye -bye. Bye -bye.